John 1. Look at verse 14. John 1, verse 14. And the Word, which was Christ, became flesh. And the Word dwelt, you ought to translate, it's skene, tinted. He tinted out. He camped out among us. He tinted among us. And we have seen His glory. Glory as of the only Son from the Father. Are you a son of God? Where would you prove that? Well, John 1, 12, Romans 8. We're not slaves, we're sons. Galatians 4. He has sent the spirit of his son in our hearts by which we cry, Abba, for we are sons, not slaves. Well, we are. Uh, angels are called sons of God. Job 1. The nation of Israel is called his son. Hosea 11, 1. I call my son out of Egypt. So the fourth usage is when he uses it of God the Son, he's usually called the only one of its kind of son. Only begotten means only one of its kind. And so he's saying, he's speaking to us as the only kind of son that comes from the Father, full of judgment, wrath, anger, hostility, and I came to tell you off. What, full of what? Grace and truth. Well, well, you already spoke through Moses. What came through Moses? For the law was given through Moses, verse 17. And the law, what did it do? Thoroughly convinced us we were rotten. It shut our mouth, according to Romans, because we broke all the commandments and we now deserve a death penalty. And God said, I want to talk one last time to the human race. And the first thing I'm going to tell them is, I'm offering you grace in Jesus. I don't want to treat you as you deserve, I'm sending grace. We thought you'd send us another death sentence. No, I'm going to let this messenger bear your sentence. But I want you to get from him. I want to be gracious to you. I want to be truthful with you. That's what I want to say. Can you hear me? Then look at chapter 3. Of course, you know verse 12 of John 1. If you believe in his name, he'll give you a right to come into his family. But he says something over in John 3, 16, that goes like this. For God so hated his enemies... Wait, wait. You can't love people that hate you. Yes, I can. The world doesn't stand for how broad the audience is. It's how bad the audience is. The world always represents those in the grip of Satan. So it represents our badness, not how vast. God loved those who hated him, rejected him, and didn't want him for however many centuries from Adam to Christ. But he said, I'm going to love them. That he gave his only son that whoever believes in the son should not perish but have eternal life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, find them guilty, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already 
because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. Jesus did not come to condemn us. He found us condemned. We were in a state of being condemned, children of wrath, before he ever came. Why should he come and heap more guilt? Some of you Christians, do you ever bring grace when you show up? Are you just telling me how bad everybody is? So what? God loves sinners. Get that in your head. He loves sinners. It's cost him more to love us than it's ever cost you. Get over it. If we got what we deserved, I'd be in hell. I didn't want God. He wanted me. I rejected him. I didn't want him. I should have been saved when I was five. All the influence in my life from Christian people. But I didn't want him. He wants you. That's the miracle. Why? What, have, what do you have that God wants? All he wants to do is say, I'm going to show people my grace by what I do for you. I sent a messenger that says, I want to be gracious. I'll do all the work. You just believe me. Just trust me. Believe me. 